Being all equal and independent, no one ought to harm another in his life, health, liberty, or possessions. Reading furnishes the mind only with materials of knowledge, it is thinking that makes what we read ours. New opinions are always suspected, and usually opposed, without any other reason but because they are not common. The only defense against the world is a thorough knowledge of it. We are like chameleons, we take our hue and the color of our moral character from those who are around us. Parents wonder why the streams are bitter when they themselves poison the fountain. To love truth for truth's sake is the principal part of human perfection in this world, and the seed plot of all other virtues. Education begins the gentleman, but reading, good company and reflection must finish him. Revolt is the right of the people. No man's knowledge here can go beyond his experience. To prejudge other men's notions before we have looked into them is not to show their darkness but to put out our own eyes. All wealth is the product of labor. New opinions are always suspected, and usually opposed, without any other reason but because they are not already common. No man's knowledge here can go beyond his experience. I have always thought the actions of men the best interpreters of their thoughts. Men being, as has been said, by nature, all free, equal and independent, no one can be put out of this estate, and subjected to the political power of another, without his own consent. But there is only one thing which gathers people into seditious commotion, and that is oppression. The state of nature has a law of nature to govern it, which obliges every one, and reason, which is that law, teaches all mankind, who will but consult it, that being all equal and independent. No one ought to harm another in his life, health, liberty, or possessions. Our business here is not to know all things, but those which concern our conduct. A sound mind in a sound body is a short, but full description of a happy state in this world, he that has these two, has little more to wish for, and he that wants either of them, will be little better for anything else. A man has perfect liberty over his conscience, the a liberty of judgment. If the magistrate commands what has already been divinely commanded, then the citizen is obliged to obey and such laws cannot be unjust for they do not bind a man's conscience or his action. Reverie is when ideas float in our mind without reflection or regard of the understanding.
Few men think, yet all will have opinions. Hence men's opinions are superficial and confused. Fortitude is the guard and support of the other virtues. There is frequently more to be learned from the unexpected questions of a child than the discourses of men. Government has no other end than the preservation of property. Tyranny is the exercise of power beyond right. No one can be put out of this estate, and subjected to the political power of another, without his own consent. In transgressing the law of nature, the offender declares himself to live by another rule than that of reason and common equity. The legislative cannot transfer the power of making laws to any other hands, for it being but a delegated power from the people, they who have it cannot pass it over to others. As if when men, quitting the state of nature, entered into society, they agreed that all of them but one should be under the restraint of laws, but that he should still retain all the liberty of the state of nature, increased with power. The end of law is not to abolish or restrain, but to preserve and enlarge freedom. For in all the states of created beings, capable of laws, where there is no law there is no freedom. There are a thousand ways to wealth, but only one way to heaven. Good and evil, reward and punishment, are the only motives to a rational creature. These are the spur and range whereby all mankind are set on work, and guided. Try all things, hold fast that which is good. All men are liable to error, and most men are, in many points, by passion or interest, under temptation to it. It is one thing to show a man that he is in error, and another to put him in possession of the truth. Seek to make thy course regular, that men may know beforehand what they may expect. The state of nature has a law of nature to govern it, which obliges every one, and reason, which is that law, teaches all mankind, who will but consult it. I pretend not to teach, but to inquire.